All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to take the Kumiko, which we made in the last video, take what we learned from it and create a box with a new Kumiko. So we'll do the same pattern, but this time out of walnut. I've already got the strips milled up here. The box will look something like this with the Kumiko inset on the lid and the rest will be made from chestnut. Let's get right into it. The first step in creating Kumiko is cutting the components of the frame. I'm doing that on my shooting board here. If you don't have one of these, you need to make one. They're really helpful to have in the shop. I cut the components all at once by taping them together and using the crosscut sled on the table saw. I'm assembling all of the parts with glue as I go, rather than gluing everything at the end like I did last time. Here's a lot of back and forth between the 45 degree plane jig and the shooting board. I found the walnut to be not as nice as the cherry to build up a kumiko tended to split and not leave so nice of an edge, even though I completely reground and resharpened my plane since the last time. I used the same thickness strips for the Kumiko as last time, around 4mm. I found the pattern looked much better with a smaller size but relatively thick components. There was a bit more fiddling around with getting a good fit on all the pieces this time around because the frame was not 100% perfect. So I had to custom fit a lot of the pieces and I couldn't just knock them all out one after the next on the jig. Next, I move on to creating the box. This is the board I chose for the main body. All right, if you're trying to mill up a board which doesn't have any single flat face on it, like this one here, what you can do, um, there's a good trick to use a table saw. You can take a reference board, which is straight and longer than the board that you're trying to mill. Then you put the long straight board up against your table saw fence put your board that you want to mill up against that board and then push the whole thing through the table saw. That'll give you one edge that you can start all of your um, jointing and planing operations from. Here's the second pass on the table saw. This is a great way to mill up boards if you don't have a jointer. You can get both edges square without needing a jointer. I don't go into all the details about milling here, just a few shots of going through the process. If you're interested in the steps required to mill up a board, I talked about it in one of my previous videos. Check the link up at the top. All right, guys, we've got our boards milled up here. So these two are chestnut. This will be the main body and the lid of the box. This is cherry, and it'll go on the inside of the box. So the kumiko here is going to be inset on the lid. So we have to cut a small rebate on one end of this. Then we have to cut a dado in the bottom of this in order to accept the base of the box. And then cut the four sides and work on the miters. Here I'm on the router table to cut the rebate, which will accept the Kumiko. It did a number on the top edge of the board, so I had to rip the board down a bit further to remove the chipping. After cutting the rebate and ripping the boards down, I move on to cutting the dado, which was about 4mm wide, so I had to do it in two passes on the table saw. Now this jig I'm using isn't exactly the pinnacle of safety. I would have rather put a hard stop behind the workpiece rather than in front of it. 
you need to put a lot of force into it to keep the board from being kicked back by the saw. I had already built it before I realized my failure, and at that point it would have been way too much work to remove the five screws holding it together. A great way to glue up boxes or anything else with miters is to put your joint tightly together relative to a flat reference edge and then put some tape over the joint. When you close it up, the tape will make a nice clamp for the glue. I was really happy to see it come together for the first time here. Next I measure and cut the bottom from the cherry. Is this not the most satisfying thing you've seen today? Then I miter all the fill components from the cherry. I rough cut it first and then sneak up on it with several small passes. Putting it all together for the first time was really cool. I get the first feeling for how it would look finished at this point. Now this looks scary, because it is. I need to rebuild this jig into something a little bit more OSHA approved. I'm cutting the splines into the miters to reinforce the miter joints. At this point I've already glued up the box off camera and I'm fitting up all the cherry fill components. Then I cut the splines to put into the miter joints. Yes, I'm using a feeler gauge to apply the glue. Deal with it. Nobody's needed those things since hydraulic lifters came on the market. Here I glued the Kumiko in, just a few dabs of glue will do ya. Makes the cleanup easier because there's no squeeze out. I started finishing the bottom panel with some red tinted oil, followed by the rest of the fill pieces. Same philosophy with the glue, just a few drops here and there to keep it all in place. Cut all the splines off with a saw and sanded them flat by hand. Now to the best part, applying the finish. I used a paintbrush with some beeswax to finish the kumiko and a rag for the rest of the box. After the beeswax, I applied a coat of wax. Here it is all finished up. The fit on the lid isn't as tight as I would like it to be, but that's life, nothing you do about it now. There's one apprentice mark on it which I intentionally left as a testament to my failure and as a motivation to improve. I don't explicitly show it in any shot, but maybe somewhere in the video you can find it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.